All right, so let's get started with modeling our Boston Dynamics spot robot. As with our previous video, we're going to make sure we have a reference image, something we can look at while we model. And I pulled that up right here. So here is the spot robot. You can see he is quite adorable. And looking at him right now, I think there's about five components that we'll have to model, the four legs, and then the center chassis right here. So let's get started with the center chassis. So going back to our work plane in Tinkercad, we're going to go ahead and grab a box, and we're going to change the dimensions to 70. Now if I'm going too fast for you, or if I'm doing something that you don't understand, you can always rewind the video or pause it and slow it down. If you have any further questions, please make sure you check out our first video on beginning of Tinkercad, or ask a question in the comments below. So you can see right here I changed the height to 15, and I changed the length there to 70. Also, this is a bit right, or it's not right, but more of sharp for my liking. The spot is nice beveled edges. So we can change that by going up to the shapes menu and changing the radius here to two. And see it softens those edges and we can start to add spot's face, which is just a slight little fillet like that. The fillet is a sharp edge that looks kind of like this wedge right here. I'm going to change this width to 5. We're going to change the height to 15 so it matches our little box here. And we're going to change it from a solid to a hole. And we're going to push it in so that it is fully inside. And we're also going to make sure it's aligned. So we're going to select everything, go up here to our line tool, and center it like that. And then we're going to group it like this. There we go. Now what we need to do is add the inner part of the face where all the sensors are and this fat little grill right here. So to do that, we're going to pull out this polygon shape. We're going to change it to a hole. And we're going to rotate it 90 degrees. This right here will be where the grill is. And these two places are where the sensors are going to be made. So we're going to be cutting it out of this main block. We're going to change the height to 15, like so. We're going to change this width right here to, let's say, about 14. And we're going to change this to about 12. All right. And once we do that, we want to rotate it ever so slightly at 10 degrees, just so that this face and this face are closer in angles together. Once we do that, we're going to push it in here. I forgot to change the height. Change the height to about 12 push it in, and then we're going to raise it up about one, like so. Your model should look about like this. We're going to make sure it's horizontally centered. There we go. If it doesn't look like that, that's fine. All we're really trying to do is get the rough shape of what Spot's face looks like. So it doesn't have to be exact. This is going to be an impression of the Spot robot. It will not be an exact model. Once we have that, we're going to go ahead and add little features on the inside, just where the eyes are going to be. You see his little sensor eyes right here? We're going to add something like that. So to do that, since this is at an angle, it would be kind of annoying to create some boxes and try to angle it exactly. What we're going to do is we're going to use the work plane tool up here. So we're going to click on the work plane tool. You notice it creates this little flat with the cone. Wherever we set it is where our new work plane is going to be that we can work off of. So if I click on this inner grill area here, you can see the work plane turns orange. It has the same angle that this does, which makes it much easier for me to create shapes. You see the shapes adhere to that work plane. I'm going to change this hole that I just made to 2 by 2 millimeters, and I'm going to change its height to 2 millimeters as well. Notice height is coming towards us rather than up. I'm going to move it here to the center. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it till it's about right here. And I'll move it up one. Let me move it over just one more. There we go. Then I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to move it over here, holding shift so it only moves on one axis. Then I'm going to duplicate both of these. And you notice it moves over again. That's because the duplicate is the duplicate and repeat tool. So it's repeating my last action, which is moving it over. We don't want to do that, so we're just going to drag it back down. And that looks about good. So we're going to combine these, just like that. And then to get out of this new work plane we've made and go back to the old one, we're going to click the work plane tool again. And we can just hover it anywhere else that's not touching our model like that. And it returns us to the original work plane. 
And now we have these nice little eyes on the chassis. Now, of course, this is going to be a model that we're going to be 3D printing out. And I want the legs to be able to move. So to do that, we're going to use some magnets that are going to be embedded in the bottom that will attach themselves to the legs. The magnets that I picked out are these I just found on Amazon. They are 10 millimeter in diameter and they are three millimeter wide. So we're going to design some inserts for those. So to do that, we're going to move our chassis out of the way, grab a box and a cylinder. I'm going to change the dimensions of both of these to 10 millimeters by three millimeters high, like that. Same for the box. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drag them together so that this circle, the cylinder, is about half in and half out the box, like so. Let's see, yeah, about there. All right, then we're going to combine them. So Control G on the keyboard or the group tool up here, and we have this nice little piece. What we're going to do is I'm going to push this off to the side. I'm going to duplicate it a couple times because we're going to be using it a few more times in this model. I'm going to grab one, and I'm going to rotate it so that it is vertical, and so that let me just change the degree right here, 90, so that it is going along the length here. Then we're going to raise it up so that it's not inside the work plane, but on top of it. And I'm going to show you a nifty little thing about the work plane. You notice the work plane has some big squares right here and some small squares. The big squares are in the thick, dark lines. Small squares are in the thinner, lighter lines right here. The big ones represent 10 millimeters, so it's 10 by 10. The small ones are 1 millimeter, so 1 millimeter by 1 millimeter. The shape we made over here, the chassis, is 20 millimeters wide. You can see right here. So it fits in two of those big boxes. I want to leave a 2 millimeter space between the outside and the inside of this magnet. In other words, I want to have a 2 millimeter gap of plastic between the magnet itself and whatever it's attaching. So to set that up ahead of time without having to look under here and do some measurements, I can just drag these two of the small boxes away from this thick line. So this is two millimeters away from here. And I can do that with the other side. So I'm going to duplicate it, move it over. And I'm just now noticing that this is still inside the work plane. There we go. And you can see now it's two millimeters on this side. 2 millimeters on this side, and this is 20 millimeters in total. So now all I have to do is duplicate these again. Duplicate. Move it over, let's say about 40 millimeters. And now I can move our chassis over here, making sure that it fits inside these two boxes. And then I can raise it up 2 millimeters, like so. And now you can see it is two millimeters on each side, and they are both about where I'd want the legs to attach. Maybe I'm going to move it a little further this way, making sure not to undo it. That's about good. So there'll be one leg here, one leg here, one leg here, one leg here. I'm going to select everything again and group them. And there we go. So now we have some inserts where those magnets that I showed you earlier can be pushed in and provide something for the legs to attach to. We're going to just move this over here, and we're going to get started on the legs. All right, so to start with the legs, we're going to have to create a shoulder mount where the magnet's going to go, and then this nice little reverse articulated leg here. So to do that, we're going to start with the cylinder. We're going to change the height of the cylinder to seven and change the length and width to 15, using tab to switch between numbers. All right, then we're going to do is we're going to grab one of these little inserts. We're going to move it up so that it's two millimeters off the work plane. And we're going to move it so they're just touching like they are here. And then when they're just touching, we're going to move them 11 millimeters into this little shoulder joint, the cylinder. We're going to combine them like that, and we're going to just inspect. You'll notice it's a little off-center. It's because I didn't align it. So what we're going to do is we're going to select them both, 
go up here to our line tool and center them like that. There we go. Now we can group them. That looks about good. Now we need to do this reverse articulated leg. So we can do that by grabbing a box, changing the width to five, changing the height to three, adding its little joint there in the middle, this little piece right here. We're gonna just make it a cylinder because it's easy for us and it still looks decent. I'm gonna change the length and width to eight and the height to three. And we're gonna zoom in just a little bit. And we're gonna make it so that this piece stops right here at the halfway point of the cylinder. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this box right here, Control V, or duplicate up here. Rotate it 90 degrees and stick it in so that it is about the same as this one. You'll know you did it right when you have this nice little square in here of overlapping pieces. And once we have that, we're going to select all three objects. We're going to group them. Now we have a nice little reverse articulated leg. We're going to rotate it 45 degrees like this. And we're going to move it so that it sits about where this end is touching the middle of the circle, the cylinder here. You can tell it's a cylinder because this piece right here happens to bisect it right there in the middle. Now, if you're not sure, you can always just grab a box, and go like this, looks about centered, but it's also kind of just eyeballing it, whatever you like most. So I want to put it about there. Next, we also need to create its little foot, this little pad right here. So to do that, what we can do is we can grab a cylinder, change its height to three, and we're going to change this right here. It'll stay about seven, like that. Once we do that, we can move it in here and we have a nice little pad that it can walk on. We can just group it like so, and we have a nice little walking foot, and we have a nice little leg. What we're gonna do is we're gonna stand this leg up, so we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees there, and 90 degrees here, because we need it to be on that side. You notice, since we're 3D printing this, I have one side that's completely flat, one side that's not. That's just so that it's an easier, the printers have an easier time printing this, because it is all one flat side. We're gonna bring it up till it is on top of the work plane like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag our chassis over and then we're gonna move it up so it's about level with the leg. That looks about good. We're gonna duplicate it, drag it over. That looks about good. I'm just looking where the slots are if they match more or less up here, doesn't really matter since we're printing these out, this will be separate pieces that get printed. And then we're gonna copy both of these over, duplicate both over by selecting them. And then we can hold shift to select two objects at once. Control D on the keyboard, and I'm gonna move them over. And then I'm gonna use the mirror tool over here to mirror them so that the part that hangs off is on the outside on both sides. And there we go. Let's go ahead and change the colors real quick. Let's change its chassis to good yellow and change all four of its legs to a nice black color like that. Kind of keeps in the spirit with the original spot. And then one final thing. So if we go to the Boston Dynamics webpage where spot is, you can see on the page spot has some attachments. So you can see it has a cool little spot arm. It's a little robotic arm. And it's this nice little camera suite for mapping different areas. So we can kind of create something like that of our own. If we take one of these inserts, I'm going to rotate them so it goes in the side. I'm going to raise it up and move it over here. We want to create it so this would be too high up. We're going to go down about two millimeters from the top and insert it so that there's about two millimeters that stick out. So I can use the arrow keys to move it inside and out. So I want it two millimeters here. We're gonna group it. And now I can put a magnet in here and we can put some cool attachments on top. Now I'll leave the attachments to you guys. I have some examples right here if you'd like to see. I mean a nice little hook arm where I can attach things. 
and then this little luggage rack where you can add some some materials that spot can carry make sure when you do it you add a spot for the magnet to go on the attachment as well as on spot otherwise it won't be able to attach and there you are this is our nice little spot prototype that we made in tinkercad again it's meant for 3d printing so all of these pieces are removable and the magnets can be inserted here to create some fully articulated legs which is very nice i'm going to go ahead and name our model spot for 3d printing like that and if you don't have access to a printer at home, when the Cade Museum reopens, we'll have a program in which you can print at the Cade. So stay tuned for that.